in Germany in the smaller houses, and I was in smaller houses for the most part, um, they still sing opera in German translation. And you know, those are, uh, there are times when it's not in service of the music. I mean, there, there are certain opera composers who are so scrupulous with their setting of their language. You know, Debussy, Pelliasse, Merezan would be an example, or even some Puccini and, and uh, um, it depends on how close the language that you're using for translation is to the patterns of the language of the original composition, how successful you can be with the translation. But gee, I just think it's awfully nice if the public is coming along with you and they, they're not up looking at a, at a teaser or a, a crawler thing or screen. I think it also, I think that this convention of doing stuff in original language especially in this country and even like a dialogue opera with like Carmen where they've reinstated the the spoken dialogue and cut out the sung dialogue which was actually written by somebody from New Orleans uh, by a man named Guy Ro. and um, um, he um, um, I think it's so ridiculous for a bunch of Americans to be walking around the stage talking and conversing and singing in a language that they don't understand to an audience for the most part that doesn't understand it either and pretending that they're authentic. It, to me, a serviceable translation would be nice. Um, I think that sometimes people singing in a foreign language with subtitles or, or supertitles, it has made singers lazy about really communicating within that foreign language and really having the scrupulous attention to coloration and everything because they just said, well, the audience is going to get it and I'm just going to sing my beautiful voice. So, you know, I think, I think a, an international house like the Met, you know, okay, do, you've got an international public singing original language, but I think a lot of smaller houses, especially in uh, comic opera, you know, to be able to, to tell a joke and immediately have the audience get it, not because they're reading it, but because they're responding, it's, it's really nice for the people on stage to be able to do that. Lyric drama, it goes by a little more slowly and you can make a case for original language in that, but even that, I mean, here at school we, we do things in English and the audience seems to love it. We don't use any visual aids. They, they come along with you and it's great for the young singers because they, they don't have to go that extra, being on stage and walking around and singing and and listening to an orchestra, there are so many skills that are being tested there already. To add the dimension of foreign language for singers that are pretty inexperienced, it's really hard for them to act well. And I know that's, that's David Morlock's opinion about it, and that's why we do things in English here. So, you know, it's, it's good to become accomplished in your own language before you try another one. That's what I would say. <laughs>